Okay, I'm going to be doing this night's broadcast on a king uh, from the Bible in Jeremiah 52, uh, verse 31 through 34. It says, Now, in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the year of Awal Murdoch, became king of Babylon. On the 25th day of the 12th month, he released Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and freed him from his prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat of honor higher than those of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. Day by day, the king of Babylon gave Jehoiachin a regular allowance as long as he lived till the day of his death. So, what is going on here? Who is Jehoiachin? Jehoiachin is later, uh, is earlier on mentioned in uh, in the book of First Sec No Second Kings, twenty four, and we'll see a little bit about this guy. Second Kings twenty four. Okay, gotta go back a little ways. Second Kings twenty four. We'll read a little bit about. Jehoiachin. Now Jehoiachin was the son of Jehoiakim, who was his father, who was king. But uh, but we'll read the story of both of them. So we see Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Judah. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Ze Zebedah, a daughter of Pedaiah. She was from Rumah, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as uh, evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. During Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded the land, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. But then he turned against Nebuchadnezzar and rebelled. The Lord sent Babylon, Armenian. Moabite and Ammonite raiders against him to destroy Judah in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants the prophets. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood, uh, for he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and Jehoiachin, his son, succeeded him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out from his own country again, because the king of Babylon had taken all his territory from the wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Now we get to Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nahushata, daughter of El Nathan. She was from Jerusalem. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the officials of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem to lay siege to it, and Nebuchadnezzar him himself came up to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiachin, king of Judah, his mother, and his attendants, and his nobles and officials all surrendered to him. So, we see, first off, Jehoiachin starts to reign. He only reigns only three months. He is taken off to Babylon. At the age of 18, put in prison for 37 years. Then we see this strange passage where it talks about how uh, later when a new king from Babylon rises to power, he lets Jehoiachin out and he, he promotes him above all the other nobles and all the other officials and he even gives him a regular allowance. Oh, what's going on there? Uh, and the only thing I suspect could be the only thing that I could think of and I'm not quite for sure, because the scripture doesn't directly say that. But let's suppose Jehoiachin had those 37 long years to think about what he'd done. Think about his sins. And let's suppose he repented. Let's suppose he, he did the right thing and repented and turned back to the Lord. And Because after all, he's in a foreign land. He has 37 long, hard years in a prison to think about what he's done with his life. So, 
let's suppose that is the case. Let's suppose he repented and the Lord was graciously gracious to him and restored him and gave him, you know, good rest of the years of his life, whatever he had left. He was probably 55 at the time this happened. But uh, let's suppose that happened. Uh, we got to think about, yes, the Lord is a very gracious God. He restores us when we repent. But we also got to think about some of the things Jehoiachin lost. Let's say he did repent. It doesn't give him his time back. He doesn't get back that time he frittered away doing wrong and being stubborn towards the Lord. In Jeremiah 22, we see also another thing Jehoiachin did not get back. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah 22. So in Jeremiah 22, it says, this man, Jehoiachin, a despised broken pot, an object that no one wants, why will he and his children be hurled out and cast into a land they do not know? O land, O land, O land. Bear, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. For none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of the house of David uh, or rule anymore in Judah. So, and it says before that part, uh, verse 27 of Jeremiah 22, you will never come back to the land you long to return. So, even though it seemed to go better for Jehoiachin in his later years. Maybe he repented. Maybe God was gracious and bestowed on him favor. He couldn't get back his lost years. He couldn't be, get back the land he had been taken away from. He, he couldn't get a lot of stuff back. But, you know, we do know that when we turn to the Lord, no matter how badly we've blown it, the Lord is very gracious and he's very generous with his mercy. And so... Some of you may today be thinking, well, you know, I've made a pretty bad mess of my life. I don't know if the Lord would ever forgive me for what I've done. You know, well, the good news is Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for all our sins. And he also came to give us a restored new life. It's not saying that if we turn away from sins and repent of our sins and start doing the right thing, it doesn't mean there isn't consequences that linger afterwards. I mean... You know, some people wait until they're very old to finally say, they'll say, I, well, I'll put off turning to Christ until I'm older, you know. And then time goes by, and then eventually they finally do make this decision and realize, oh, wow, I've re wasted all that time in sin, and I can't get those years back. You can't get your time back. You can't get your time back on earth. You know, some people think they can just repent tomorrow, and tomorrow comes and goes, and they just keep going and going, and then finally they get into a hard spot. Then maybe then they consider repenting, but but it doesn't get our time back. So Jehoi Jehoiachin lost his time. He lost that land he wanted to return to. But, you know, we do see that God was gracious, it appears. It appears that God was gracious. I don't see why else God would, you know do that in his life if he had not really been sincerely repentant of his sins. I could be wrong, but that's just a speculation. But the point is that when we turn to Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, when we leave that old way behind, we can have restoration. We can see God work all things together for our good, even the ugly things. You know, we can't get our time back. We can't get a lot of things back. We can't get lost opportunities back, but we can definitely choose today. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what's really important, and it's better we choose sooner than later. I hope you found this sermon encouraging and uplifting. God bless.